discussion i invite you all to unmute yourself or and come on video um do we have everyone do we have prakash ji carol uh deb reda uh dr yulia so uh and and in addition to inviting you all um you know you have all mentioned your gurus uh, and perhaps they are in spirit but i invite prayfully invite them also uh, so that their messages also get channeled through all of us today thank you so um so as we start uh my first question and uh please feel inspired to jump in whenever you feel inspired please come into the conversation um so i would like to start with uh what is yoga i've heard different dimensions and different perspectives different understanding in your own experiences of yoga also the wisdom of masters but if you are asked what is yoga how would you share the essence of yoga i'd love to hear from everyone well it's not a what i would say is not a book definition but for me it means living it every moment versus some people say i'm going to yoga well mm-hmm. if you're living it you're not you're not going anywhere because that's your state of being all the time so uh just that awareness that you carry around all the time and that striving to know the self at all levels to me is what yoga is ah uh, that is such a beautiful shift in words which just changes the whole dimension thank you so much girl that's that's wonderful uh, i i actually loved um uh, the way Carol mentioned the Carol G mentioned yoga it's beautiful yes um states of union yes uh and being so connected now when we say yoga it would be it would really mean the being in the states of tapas that is at all times so connected at all times being the yogi yes Right. I like that expression that you use to Nandaji source connected. That pretty much says it all very very simply. <laughs> yes. Oh. Uh, Prakashi, could we hear from you? Yeah, I feel it's uh we all very much align with the uh, vision and value and the meaning of yoga is so beautiful uh it seems simple when we just say the word union are coming together but it's also important to understand what is taking place in the union like what is it what is the union of so in a in a physical body in a human life or a physical life there's always polarities right and it is the ultimate desire of our soul to not have any boundaries the only reason we have the polarity is because there's a boundary so the ultimate <coughs> the ultimate desire is to not have boundaries so this expansion and const, uh, constant expansion of consciousness to merge into the infinite is ultimately the yoga is like no matter where we are we always want to expand whether it be a physical space where it's emotional space where it's consciousness so this deep yearning that we have to merge is yoga for me and that is and has to be a way of life no matter what we do like that's why uh, there's a statement that's often said if you think you're perfect then there's something wrong because perfection is the limitation and it's one of the reason most people procrastinate so i feel it's more important to feel 
like uh, Dr. Yulia said, start with what you have, don't procrastinate, just expand and continuously be in a state of expansion, be in a state of awareness. And yes, we can talk about all the benefits that yoga brings, but ultimately it's about expansion into the infinite from all aspects. Uh, Prakashi, so many people watching here, here must be uh, acknowledging to themselves that they are victims of that perfection. And, uh, you know, talking about what you were saying, so, so all the polarities, you know, they seem to us to have a boundary. And is yoga the dissolution of that boundary, would you say? Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. We, the boundaries are necessary to have a physical life, right? Because if there is no boundary for my body, or if there's no boundary for uh, the object that I'm sitting on right now, I wouldn't be able to sit. Because every matter is operating at a much higher frequency. And that's why we're able to sustain that, right? So it's just, and trying to understand and perceive where the boundaries start. And, and there's this need for it to be useful for us to sustain our life, sustain our breath, everything. But at the same time, we need to know how to align with it, how to merge into it. Thank you. Uh, Frida ji, um, uh, I would also love to hear from you on what is yoga. That is what we've been discussing. How would you, what, how would you define yoga or? Well, um, of course, we have great definitions today that I cannot talk about. <laughs> but uh, um, to me, the yoga is the everyday life. And that's, that's yoga to me. Every step we go in the universe, um, you know, how we address uh, everything, how we act and react to everything that is happening around us, that uh, inner peace, that um, inner happiness that comes from knowing who you are and uh, that union with the whole universe. Um, it is yoga, um, but it is demonstrated in the everyday life. I think it's the everyday life. Um, there are many, um, that my, <clears throat> my husband is not in any kind of, uh, let's say, organized spiritual uh, path, but in his acting, in his everyday, in his um, acting in his everyday gentleness, that he works as a gentleman, he honors women, uh, he honors the family, he honors the, his clients, he honors life and the way of, of how he is um, as a man, as a husband, as a father, as all his roles are uh, saying more like he, he, he's a high spiritual being in a sense of how he does every day. And so I think it's important to reflect that in the everyday life as, as we go in life, just to be yoga, to be, just to be in every step of the way. I would like to add to that, Frida Ji, because uh, in, in yoga, one of the most difficult forms of yoga, they say, is gruhastha yoga. Gruhastha means householder. Like living a married life as a family is one of the most difficult forms of yoga to live with awareness. So if you're living, like you said, I know so many beautiful people, they don't, like you said, they don't have a traditional practice of spirituality but they show up in society, show up in family, and they're reliable, uh, <clears throat> available, sustainable, honest, and have integrity. And I think that is the first five, uh, the first five plus five, 10 aspects, as Carol mentioned in Yamas and Niyamas, those are the fundamentals of uh, yoga. So they're not doing postures or pranayama, but most people are not doing the first 10 elements, they're doing the last two elements. So without the first 10 elements, nothing matters. So I think that's the most important thing. Uh, and mm -hmm. it comes into the grihastha yoga. So, so that's beautiful. 
Uh, Prakashi, I just, I want to thank you for saying that because sometimes in spiritual circles, I see a looking down upon people who are playing in the world and more worldly. And I just have to, I just have to say how grateful I am that you have said that it is really to, you know, sometimes it is harder to live in the real world in the Grahistra thing than maybe, you know, being in the Himalayas somewhere. Maybe sometimes, sometimes <laughs> it is, you know, <laughs> I mean, that is difficult too, but sometimes, you know, there's a lot of challenges in the world as well. And there can be yogis in this, you know, living this a full worldly experience too, in addition to that. That is, that is more <laughs> important. I mean, we are meant to live a household life because if everybody went and lived in Himalayas, the human existence would uh, perish in one uh, generation. I, so, I, I, it's, it's beautiful, uh, Prakanti. What you mentioned is beautiful. I would relate it to the word wholeness and uh, yogam is the wholeness. And from the deeper sense of yoga, it is tantiram. That is, at every sense of reality, at every experience, we are in the state of, of uh, uh, a, a bliss and happiness. You know, and uh, yogam is, uh, sorry, tantiram is that relationship of source connectivity at every level from, this, from, the, perspective, from the point of being whole. And being whole does not matter where we are. We are whole and complete. And the constancy of transforming karma to dharma at every stage. If we are in the household, yes, we progress faster because we have more of, of more to transform. <laughs> yes. I, uh, I, um, in relation to what Frida G was saying, I it makes me think of people I know, they, like your husband, they don't practice any formal yoga meditation, but they're naturally yogis. And I look at them and I think they could t maintain their equilibrium so easily under great duress and stress. And here I've been meditating for decades and I don't feel like I come close to what some people do naturally. It's just some mm -hmm. amazing people. They just it, it, it flows from them, this natural balance and equanimity and sense of self. It, it's just there like breathing for them. So true. And uh, one of my teachers um, is uh, Juan Manuel Estrada. And he told us always, the initiation starts in the family. So... Mm -hmm. Always be careful what's going on, you know, your relationships with your family. Well, it starts with us, first of all, of course. It's our peace, our inner peace, our inner happiness and all of that. But then having a good relationship with your family is so important too. And many times, um, like you say, you know, we go out in the world and we do many things, but how is our family is so important and so it is um, it is that wonderful exactly you very well said uh, you see how we see people and we are surrounded by people that are whoa um, it, 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 it is uh, beautiful to be here also I want to share with you in Mayan we have a beautiful salutation that is say in La Keshe, and yep. the other <laughs> Alakem. And in La Keshe means I am you and you are me. And that's mm -hmm. how I see the world. Um, and if we, you know, we see that we are like that and we are all one, then we start going to see the world in a beautiful, beautiful place that it is. Thank you. What you're saying is really important too about family because uh, we have such an advantage in life and in our spiritual path when we have a happy, stable family. Because I'm sure everyone knows many people that did not have that advantage. And um, there was a lot of disturbance in the family growing up. And they have so many traumas to undo before they could really experience any inner peace. It's just 
a lot of time and energy spent undoing before they could make more progress. And also, uh, there's three aspects of our life, like the triangle. One is personal path. The other is the spiritual path. The third, the balancing act is the relationships, our family life. If one of them is absent or not balanced, it's not in alignment with anything. <clears throat> so if somebody is working 80 hours a week, not spending enough time with family, or not giving enough time and attention to spiritual practice, it's not balanced. And the same is also true for spiritual practice. Somebody's sitting and meditating all day, not taking care of their family and their wife is in pain or kids are not getting food. That's not a spiritual life at all. That's extremely unbalanced spiritual life. And to answer another thing you mentioned earlier, a lot of people comment and look down upon you. <clears throat> you know, the most difficult thing to observe is a spiritual ego. It's like very difficult to see. And people that are commenting like that are the first people that you need to run away from. <laughs> I agree so. with that. I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> people talk a lot and judge or or I'm not nearly as attracted to as the people who are quiet and when they say something it's profound. Yeah, when the people judge like that, that is definitely not yoga, right? According to you all. <laughs> no, that's they need more help than anybody else. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I had a question. Uh, this is really a deep question, uh, deep, deeply personal question. Uh, you know, we've talked about yoga, um, you know, uh, uh, for the yogis who are actually like maybe practicing in the Himalayas, in the household, whether they have a religious practice or not, and you've been very inclusive. What about nature? Because when I went to the Redwood Forest, really even the trees felt like yogis, like have... Uh, does this yoga and this yogi definition extend beyond humans too? I think so. <laughs> uh, because, nature, you know, nature is our reflection. And so you can see all these nature places and you will say, whoa, you know. And we, in, uh, when, once was I invited in, uh, to Korea. And this guy um, has a stone park and it's so beautiful, the, the stone. I would say stone people because the, the stones are, you know, part of, part of, of nature. And you can see uh, also one time I was in, uh, in the rainforest of Venezuela in an island and this guy collected stones that are in different shapes of animals and hearts and different forms. And so in nature, of course, you know, yoga is definitely in nature too. And we can see all kinds of postures too in, mm -hmm. in these stones, definitely. Well, consciousness is in everything. And then that of course mm -hmm. includes nature. But nature has a certain balance that we don't have with all the electronics we're exposed to all the time. So being in nature and around green things and with the elements, it, it really is a, a natural way to rebalance ourselves. You know, when we talk about trees like, like yogis, you know, there's, there's this great book called The Secret Life of Trees, how they yes. communicate with each other yes. and nourish each other and help each other under stress. It's so fascinating. So, that was mind blowing, literally. I know, I know. It's a beautiful book. So, you know, everything in nature is so interconnected. The more we tune into that, the more settled and balanced and grounded and serene we could be. We, when you look at the eyes of people who are in nature a lot, like farmers and gardeners, they have this cert, just a beautiful look in their eyes. Like they're not, you know, frenetic about everything that's going on because they're just in tune, grounded. And, and that in itself seems to be a spiritual practice. You know, it's a very interesting thing that was mentioned and that was about nature. And when you look into yoga, um, uh, the, 
the unions with the five elements mm-hmm. is uh, is from the from the core. So when you talk about the union of the five elements, which is earth, water, or liquid, uh, fluidity, fire, air, if we are con- connecting to each one of them on each layer, uh, nature, of course, then begins to play a major part. Like for instance, just walking around the tree, you know, has its energy field, or just looking at the sky and worshiping the sky for its infinity has its own dimension of energies. So the five elements that we are looking at as bringing them together is what yoga is. I remember the time when uh, my guru, you know, like I was medit- like when he was meditating. Uh, uh, it would rain all around him, but never, it, never at that particular spot. And that's when you realize that's what yoga is: the five, the, all the five elements as within. It is totally aligned, and when that alignment happens, then naturally everything as nature becomes for us, you know, that resonance of the, you know, that that connectivity, the worship. Also, uh, <clears throat> nature is all around us, right? And uh, depends on what part or what aspect of the nature we are, we are able to tune into different aspects of ourself. Ourself. If you are near the ocean, if you are in a forest, if you're in a desert, if you're in a mountain, each one of them has a very distinct qualities. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. So when you are in a mountain, it makes it easy to connect to yourself. When you are in a desert, they say it's easy to connect with God. When you're in a forest, uh, <clears throat> it's easy to connect with the source. When you're on the beach, it's easy to connect with the loving aspect of your lovers. Right? So each aspect of the nature is very, has a very distinct quality. And our human body is the most sophisticated physical apparatus. It's not just designed to reproduce and work and live. It's also a very powerful, sophisticated instrument to access consciousness. And we are slowly learning at this age, but I think our ancient seers and sages used it much more advanced applications of the human body than we are able to use right now. So when we go to higher altitudes, the access to the higher realms becomes easier. So our body is constantly pulled down by the gravity. So when you go to higher altitude, you're getting, the gravity is getting less and less on your body impact. So your meditation and the going to deeper to connect yourself becomes a lot easier. That's one of the reasons you've noticed all the, all the people that wanted to go meditate deeper went to as high of an altitude as they possibly could, irrespective of the, like whether it's a forest, deep forest in the Southern part of the India or frigid cold in the Himalayas, they chose to go to the higher altitudes. So it's just understanding how to use the instrument we have because this body is not just a body, it's an instrument to access consciousness. Wow, this is so beautiful, so profound. You know, I feel we are not having a discussion, but every time you all are talking, you know, there is a connection, a union happening. Um, you know, union with all of you sitting here, uh, with the wisdom we are connecting of Ascended Masters. And I, as you all were sharing um, your experiences with nature, it feels like we are connecting. Uh, even there, this connection is, is happening. It's, it's beginning here and it's just rippling. Um, the, the next thing I would like to ask is, you know, uh, yoga has been exploding in the public consciousness 
it is uh, it has been expanding to different countries to different people of every socio economic uh, of every ages it's just been expanding and uh, in fact where i stay there are yoga studios you know everywhere in gyms and uh, that is great but what i wanted to ask you is what is your observation on how yoga is being taught at large um uh, what are we succeeding at are there any um uh, myths or misconceptions of yoga that we are propagating um just i want your observation and if there are any challenges how do we you know how do we transform them well i i i see that um yoga is everywhere now <clears throat> before you know we used to see one yoga you know <laughs> very seldom but now we see them everywhere Uh, which is good because that means the consciousness is opening now you see the vegan restaurants full of young people which is good because it's opening consciousness and all of that <clears throat> but i see how different um they are projecting yoga to the yoga i learn uh where you stay in one posture for one minute at least and um in the way we were taught it at the universal gray brotherhood uh that Sergio uh, <clears throat> Reynaldo de la Ferrier brought that from India but the way we were taught it, we were doing some stretches and then we take a cold shower and then we change clothes to white clothes and then we start doing the the relaxation the nani yoga and then the relaxation and then the yoga postures the whole class took like two hours and um, each minute um it was very counted and very um wonderful and now you go and see the yoga and you see like they are doing the stretches and looks like they are competing a little bit on who does better postures and they are even taking it to a place of uh, sometimes stretching um uh, circus like um where they have those uh, clothes from the ceiling and doing different things and um so it is different definitely different um but if we um if they um or if each people really studies what yoga is um i think it will be good but at least that is opening the doors at least the 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 yoga is more um, common now which is good i think what about opening the doors is important because people who are really serious about learning the deeper aspects of yoga will find it once that door is open they'll start with asana that's how i started I started taking yoga for stress management and then as soon as I uh learned how to do relaxation that in itself opened another world for me and then I learned meditation one step led to another so for the people who really just want to reduce stress or get fitter it that's a good in itself but for people who really want to go deeper into themselves and learn how follow a spiritual path then it's a start the unfortunate part to me is that breath work is very overlooked and postures are done quickly like you were saying free to g and they're not done with the breath leading the movement so it's done as a physical exercise instead of as a a pranic exercise where you're working from the energy body or energy sheath and affecting the physical sheath and when you work from the pranic sheath you affect the mind and the nervous system and so on a lot as well so that's very unfortunate because there are many yoga teachers who who don't breathe diaphragmatically themselves they haven't really been taught and so the people in the classes are doing heavy chest breathing which it does not lead to a quiet state of body or mind and has health hazards uh, so to me it's really a a mix of the good and the bad together and 
people sorted out according to their need and level of evolution and those who are ready to go further, they somehow find it wherever. And those that aren't ready, then they get usually some health benefits and stress management benefits at least. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> um, I, I look into it as we've come a long way, starting from the time of Swami Vivekananda, who faced so much of opposition to even Swami Yogananda, who did face opposition, but he was able to get in. And now today it's us. And from then to now, there's been a transformation in terms of what yoga could do for you. For instance, you see a bank advertisement and you have someone meditating or doing a yoga posture to indicate this means security, peace, and, uh, and uh, um, you know, uh, so in a harmony. So, you know, we've come a long way. I look into it as this, that the moment anyone, you know, even gets a drop of honey, they will want the honey pot. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter. Ultimately, you know, yoga's goal is to give consciousness. So the more way even you might have good yoga, we might have any form of yoga, but ultimately it leads them to the honey pot. And the honey pot is consciousness. And this is what yoga was all about to give and deliver. And of course, you know, you have the good, bad, and ugly in every situation as. Uh, especially when ego comes into play and then there's so many forms of yoga popping up, but it still leads to the, the core and the core of consciousness is yoga. And uh, it's beautiful in a way in which there's so much of yoga exploding. And of course, it's like a fashion statement. For instance, in, it, the fastest growing industry in China is yoga. Because America is, it's become fashion in America. So globally, yoga has caught up. And that's beautiful in so many ways because it opens the mind and brings people to stillness and uplifts, you know, the, uh, uplifts humanity by itself. So I would say, let's, I would say it's mostly positive and beautiful that, you know, the flow of yoga to, the, to where we are today is definitely a blessing. It reminds me of this man we met. My husband and I used to run a, a yoga center in, or help run a yoga center and bookstore in New York. So this goes back to the 80s. And this yoga teacher from Russia came in one day and he said he had been in prison for a while for teaching yoga. Mm -hmm. So we've certainly come a long way from that. You know, it was a crime to teach yoga at in some countries at some times. And I think we're pretty much past that stage for sure. And the yeah. reason why, yes. No, no, please go ahead. Yes, and you know, like when you look into seeing even today, you know, like some places you go and you know, you mention that people mention, oh, yoga is supposed to be this, supposed to be that. And especially this fear with the religious groups about uh, yoga. And the truth of the situation is yoga has so much light and the more it opens up and the more it becomes, it comes into the mainstream, it definitely is going to, uh, you know, um, banish the darkness of ignorance in so many places. So whichever way it is, you know, welcoming this explosion of yoga in all its forms, I feel is like, uh, is like one of the most beautiful things happening today. The word that comes to me when people ask me questions about yoga, especially me being from India, is cultural appropriation. So often people say, is it the right thing? I'm like, well, there's also a powerful statement that was said by one of the masters that came to the West. The world will be saved by a Western woman, right? So it was said for a specific reason. There's a reason the whole spiritual movement is coming to the West. It, it wasn't an accident that uh, Vivekananda came to the West or Yogananda came or Osho or Yogi Bhajan. All of these people have traveled to the West for a specific intention because there is a specific catalytic, 
capitalism that happens in the West, that whatever is created here that is desired by the rest of the world. In fact, yoga has become a little bit more popular in India because it's more popular in the US. Just like Nandiji said, it's becoming more popular in China. It's like, this is creating the trend, right? So when we say this is creating a trend, we have to have a new uh, door openers. So, I mean, <clears throat> There's so many new inventions of yoga. In fact, Pilates is an offshoot of yoga that works primarily on core functions. Now there's a goat yoga that people do yoga with goat, right? <laughs> I mean, I don't care if you do yoga with goat or sheep, as long as you're doing it, I'm happy. <laughs> I've seen goat yoga and the goats are really cuddly, so. <laughs> And I've had people come to me when I, especially when I'm teaching in Tulum or other touristy places, they come to me and uh, they look really intoxicated. And somebody asked me like, do you want people to come when they're not in a state like this? I would like, I'd rather they come to yoga and then not come to yoga after doing all these abuse to their body, right? So if they're getting a small dose, like Nandi you say, like a small drop of honey, then eventually they start wanting to sweeten that and go on. Like a simple example, two years ago, a student would just walked into my class in Tulum and he strained out his life and now he's a full-fledged yoga teacher. Like clean up his life and no more substances. And that is a perfect example for that even a simple taste can change people's life. This is so amazing that you all have such unifying answers and how inclusive, um, you know, you all are, you know, like, uh, uh, because so many purists are like, no, this is not yoga because, you know, we have all kinds of yogas nowadays. There is beer yoga, there's all like, you know, and you all are like, you know, it's like, <laughs> I remember uh, the, you know, in my grandma's raising eyebrows and all at like this, but as you said, they're door openers and uh, as you all beautifully put it, once they come for this drop of honey, uh, they will, if they're really, you know, if, if they have that taste, they will go further, you know, all the way to the honey pot. So uh, yeah, I see Dr. Yuganda. Yeah. I see Dr. Yeah. Yuganda, would you like to come in? Yes, yes ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you, wonderful panelists, Karol Krensha, Frida Nandiji, Prakash Shegu, Deb Fancy, and also Yulia. Can you show up, please, studio? Can I see you? <laughs> Is there? Uh, I okay. think she had yeah. to leave. She sent a message. Oh, she has, okay. Okay, great. So, you no, know, we have, as you know, you are our masters of yoga. Uh, great learners are already teaching many students across the world. You know, as you know, goat yoga, you know, someone told me dog plus yoga is equal to doga. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so many things are happening in the world. But traditionally speaking, you know, the Patanjali Yoga or Ashtanga Marga, uh, the popular yoga, you know, when someone talks of yoga, basically, we ask, I have done, have you done my, your yoga today? Or someone says, I have done my yoga. Is yoga I doing? The yoga is almost synonymous with the asana. No one is actually thinking much on the pratyahara, dharana, dhyana and samadhi. Maybe a little bit, the toughest part is yama niyama, though we speak a lot, but practice least. Yama niyama. We, we always practice as rules, never as a conviction. So we have got many types of yoga now, Gnana yoga, Raj yoga, Karma yoga, Bhakti yoga. Each thing has got its own essence. And so many categories, even mantra yoga, laya yoga, so many types, you know, doga also, now <laughs> goat yoga. <laughs> so when the, in these days when asana has become synonymous with yoga, the less remembered, most important part of yoga, the second half, pratyahara to samadhi, is not being taught. It's very difficult to teach, in fact. It, it has to come within. So what is your take on how to make all these yoga groups, yoga schools, yoga studios spread across the world in their own different brand names, in different formats, in different styles? Every country, every place has got its own style of yoga now. Little modification, it acquires a different brand name. 
person's name or technic name or different uh, you know eye catching names so in this scenario how to actually awaken the people who are much interested in yoga that asana is not whole yoga it is only a part but something more else so what is not being taught in the name of yoga how do you how do you like to educate your students and through this platform how do you give your message so someone please step up and uh, i request each one of you helpful. to express your views on this please i think it's helpful to start planting seeds you have people that yoga equals asana and they don't know anything else so you slowly teach things within people's frame of reference so i know my husband and i avoid sanskrit terms when people first come to yoga because some people feel alienated it's not part of their culture but you could introduce a little breath work and talk about the stress management aspects some of the scientific aspects how it affects the nervous system and people could relate to that teach them a simple breathing practice and when they do it they really feel a difference cuz breath breathing so quickly changes our nervous system and mindset so then they're a little more open to that then you teach them a deeper relaxation exercise where they're really getting in touch more with the pranic sheath rather than just the physical sheath and they're experiencing things that they don't experience when they just work at the level of muscles. So then slowly you can introduce a little bit of philosophy. We like to have a study question at the beginning of class, maybe a short reading or a little philosophical point that only takes 2 minutes. So people who are restless and itchy don't get bored, but it just starts planting seeds. And then you could start having separate classes for people who want to go deeper teach a meditation class separately teach a philosophy class separately have a study group separately and the people that want to learn those things will come and the people who don't seem that interested initially you're still planting seeds a little here a little there something deeper than just asana and yeah. slowly people are transforming whether they want to or not whether they like it or not they're they're transforming and they slowly see well this is really changing my life doing this and then they're more open to the deeper aspects yeah thank you uh, carol so uh, someone kindly step forward how we can actually change this mass conditioning <laughs> of yoga yeah nandi ji please see yoga is very much like a stream becoming a river to becoming the ocean and what's happening today is you can say that now it is the age the satya yuga the age of consciousness has just begun so when we start our journey towards yoga slowly we get caught up the first dimension that moves us further is bhakti we begin to realize there is that higher force and then there's the push and then there's the pull factor that begins to catch up with each one of us this is a natural process like why why are disney movies famous are good for children because it has consciousness so it's a natural inclination of human of any human to actually tend to grow uh, towards light and so there's a multiplication of you of of this happening across the globe and the moment they is actually step out to being the master being the wick then they come out with their own music they come out with their own like see yogi bhajan for instance came came here he was a realized master and he came out with his kundalini yoga which is completely different from what is there in india but at the same time as a realized master he was able to put things together and and create it in such a way that that platform could be taken up by anyone and everyone to practice now this is really yoga the process of yoga so i would feel you know allow the flow to happen but then there is the most important factors that steps in and kicks in which is like bhakti then you have, have all the yama niyama and all the dimensions start coming in but one fundamental factor is that once we wake up we do not need any moral high grounds from anyone else because we are uh, we are in a place where we are able to make the right decision as what is the best for each of us so i would say let the let it flow through in the in the in the natural process everything that needed 
happens and comes when a person seeks there is a see there, there is a knowing that precedes the seeking they know so they seek and this process of yoga that essentially matures a person and creates the wholeness of a person to be able to be the master then is going to create seeds for many others to to uplift so i would say at this point you know like when we try to impose it on like for instance when we have this yoga certification as in us uh my question over here is you know on what basis is it when there's so much of so much and being a, in being from in having spent years and years and years in in the yoga in in the in the, in, in, in my inner self and coming here and uh, you know when i ask myself what is all the certification all about i feel okay it might it is okay to hold as a container but yoga is beyond all that and that is the gift that mother india has given as seeds and for each to grow and be the master and maybe they every very very will have their own form of yoga but as long as you know we are uplifting ourselves is beautiful yeah thank you nandi ji yes prakash ji yes please what your take on it i feel i agree with nandi ji on the most part but i also feel like uh but a lot of the parts we haven't allowed the natural flow to go on even if we take an example of india if it was left as it was the way of education sanskrit and everything was mainstream it's not anymore it was systematically destroyed to bring a western education system so we cannot let it go by itself we have to consciously actively and deliberately bring about a change in raising the awareness to bring more more make it more accessible to people right i mean if you turn on the tv like people come home turn on the tv they see commercials of all different things but not one aspect of yoga right so what we're doing here like talking about spirituality we are telling we are selling consciousness right selling may be a little bit crude word but it's really not we need to learn how to market consciousness until we are at the same level of marketing of a strawberry flavored tobacco or some other thing that they're selling on tv this is better than that i can get them high in 3 minutes with a breath than any other drugs they can take right so why cannot we sell it the same way it is not saleable so easily <laughs> <laughs> thing is so, a lot of people would rather have the, that strawberry flavored whatever than do the work that's involved in in no i can get you high in 3 minutes guaranteed i'm sure nandi ji can get even fa- get you faster like his breathing techniques are incredible i work with him right, in the right 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 but who who how many people want to do that it has to come from within to a certain degree no it we just have to bring it in front of them we have to show them there's an option Before. Before. because if you open a magazine there is a commercial for a product that's manufactured in a factory but there's no product like okay or it means better nobody talks about it I, the same thing packaged is sold and it's the same way consciousness is happening it's like we need to start telling people okay go home breathe for 3 minutes do this mudra you won't have anxiety do this breath you will stop you will start manifesting wealth all of these things is the same thing we just need to market better that's the only thing i'm saying because the western mind listens to different things i think there's another statement or read somewhere there's more books written by the western authors than indian authors about spirituality from india right so it's the the indian mind or the cultural the subcontinent of india listens they listen and read and differently the western mind wants to read and see intellectualize and that's why patanjali says in one of his scriptures it is an important to have a balance between the devotion and the intellect they go hand in hand they're shackled together so you cannot go by devotion by itself too far it's limited it needs to have a supportive intellect so when you go together it can go as long as you want so we have to balance the intellect along with devotion 
and we have to push the marketing, we have to bring the awareness, we have to, we have to sell it like people want to hear, just like you said, like they don't want to buy it because they think yoga is boring. But if I can tell, okay, you come to a course in two weeks, I can make you a millionaire by teaching how to manifest everything you want or cure cancer by teaching your breath, right? So if a pill can promise that that can do with 25,000 side effects and the breathing has no side effects and the chances of success are much higher. So why can't we say the same thing, right? We have to educate, package and promote in a way that people actually need. So when people come to my class, I don't have a set agenda. I see, feel the tone of the audience and then tune the class to based on the need so they can feel they got something uh, that is useful for them instead of a class that was pre-scheduled. Oh, Prakash, I just wanted to add this one thing. Uh, so my son's school, you know, asked me to do yoga for them and I just had a standard thing. And, you know, the kids were just, you know, generally like, do we have to do this, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I changed the poster. I had all the superheroes doing yoga poses, Spider-Man, Batman, everyone in a yoga pose and called it superhero yoga. Uh, we had full attendance. So I, <laughs> I just wanted to share. I hear you. I, that's what I wanted to share. Yes, um, we have to tell it to the right audience the way they want. That's all. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, Frida. What is this? Pre yeah, prenatal yoga, you know, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Well, I, I just wanted to tell you that I hear you and I see your um, dream happening because uh, young people are coming. Uh, we have one of them here that is, you know, telling us, yes, let's start with um yoga heroes or whatever, but little by little, but it is going to happen where we are going to open a magazine and we're going to see different things and where we're going to open the TV and we're going to see different things. And it is happening. It's not as fast as we want it to happen, but it is little by little, but uh, young people, I have a lot of uh, hope in young people to do this. And I think it's going to happen. So, uh, in the present world, uh, if you, yeah, please, Nandiji. Yes. Um, see, Adi Sankara, I mean, what Prakash said was so right. And Adi Sankara, like uh, you could say, was the founder of modern day Hinduism. And, uh, you know, it's like a vital thing, a vital truth is, he says, uh, bhakti and jnana are one. And that really is yoga. Because ultimately, the moment we realize, wow, it's getting to be good, bhakti kicks in. And the more of bhakti, the learning kicks in, jnana. Yeah. So this is like, this is a beautiful cycle within, within that actually activates our yoga and gets us going. So the reality of everything is, I guess we just have to allow the flow to happen because the seeds have been put in by all the masters and we are the blossom and now we are giving the putting the seeds that are, seeds across and this flow is happening so it's just beautiful that both works its way to create as much of uh, as much of the byproducts of yoga and you would say like for instance we go to a bookshop a bookshop in the airport today how many books on consciousness there is and on yoga so this explosion, I would say, is so welcome. And it would be very, it would be, uh, I would say, uh, there would be too much resistance in any way to try to form any form of control to it. But all we can do is provide out as much of wisdom as possible, because no matter what, wisdom is going to be taken up by wisdom. And uh, yoga as a journey for humanity itself is in progress. Nothing can stop it. Right. Yeah. I agree, so, Tara. Um, yeah. These talks, thank you, Doctor. Um, this talk, just opening these forums is wonderful. So all of this is just happening. Wonderful. Yeah. So here, uh, all the panelists, you know, if you observe, Carol, uh, Frida, Prakashji, Nandiji, there are so many yoga alliances 
uh, in the world. Several yoga groups forming a conglomeration of several groups again. Uh, in the name of uniting different type forms of yoga, it is going in a, a different direction of comparison and competition. It has become a saleable product. In the present scenario, saleability is ruling the roster. It's fine. But the question is, how can we actually educate the masses in terms of yoga beyond asana, in terms of yoga for awakening, apart from the Yamaniyama, Pranayama Asana, the less remembered, less practiced things, not only through philosophy, not only through scheduled, organized talks and lectures, seminars, workshops, certifications, but the real alliance, a worldwide alliance, yoga as yoga, can we actually create that? Have you found any group or are you interested in these type of things? So the World United is very much interested to bring this type of union in the world. If you observe uh, the themes of the World Parliament on Spirituality, it is categorized as two gross entities. One is pure spirituality, the other is applied spirituality. So on track one each day, there is only one subject that is pure spirituality related to inner awakening. Track two, three, four, we are having different applied aspects of spirituality. Spirituality for women, youth, education, health, yoga, faith unity also. Tomorrow we are going to have politics good governance also. Each, we are forming council membership for the world United. Each wing cannot grow in isolation. Education cannot be just revolutionized in isolation. The health system alone in isolated way cannot grow in isolation. Same with science and technology, same with business management. If one has to grow, one thing has to grow, everything has to grow. Whole arts and sciences, inner and outer has to grow together. Nothing grows in isolation. Everything is interrelated, interdependent. So from this point of view, we have already actually inviting several leaders in yoga, several leaders who are working for spirituality politics also. There are several, tomorrow we are going to have wonderful speakers who are going to present themselves on spirituality, governance and politics, how to club all these things. And arts and culture and spirituality just now on track to is finished. And so on and so forth, so many applied spiritual aspects are going on. So in this, in this view, I would like to invite all of you to be a part of this Council of Yoga, which emphasizes on the forgotten aspects of yoga, yoga beyond asana, awakening aspects of yoga, to change the masses. So in this view, how, how, how we can actually do to create a real impact, you know, isolatedly as individuals, we can impact a few hundreds or a few thousands, maybe a few millions, but never a billion people. Maybe it is possible theoretically, but practically speaking, when several people come forward under the common vision, instead of going into again comparison competition, if we come together, network together, let, if the wisdom dominates the entire subject instead of wise men, if wise men dominates, all problems come. When wisdom dominates, no problems will come. So. <laughs> So allowing wisdom or vision to dominate us, teachings dominate the teacher. So if you can go in this vision, I think something can be emerged. So in this view, I would like to hear from each one of you how we can, is it possible or uh, can we make a breakthrough in this uh, regard? I would like to listen. Um, can I speak? Uh... Yeah, please, please, please. Um... Yuganda Ji, this what you're saying is exactly what I felt many years ago. And there is an absolute so beautiful solution to this. 
See, when we talk about yoga, we are talking about what is being done in so many forms, so many ways, and it's next to impossible to really prod it in saying, this is the way. But if we embed timelessness in time, we have a way. Once a year is Mahasivaratri. Once a year is a time when we naturally can become the yogi. We naturally awaken. We naturally enlighten ourselves. So looking at this, I had actually worked with work creating a World Yoga Day four years before Modi Ji. And the reason for that was to basically peg yoga. Now if yoga is pegged into the timeline of Mahasivratri, which happens once every year, and everybody took an inner journey and understood their yoga to become a yogi, then we are there. The benefits of yoga, the attainments of yoga, the light of yoga, everything comes together in, in that one, one dimension of understanding now that you, what yoga is all about. You could do your goat yoga, you could do any forms of yoga, but ultimately when you realize that you have come to awaken yourself to being Siva, being the higher self in the now, that has resolved yoga in all its forms, in all its ways. If we try in any other which way, like saying, okay, hey, wait a minute, there's goat yoga, like let's have buffalo yoga. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> More the better. <laughs> but ultimately, if the goal was to realize and awaken and enlighten, and now you talk about yoga, now we talk about everything else, now everything makes sense. <laughs> this is what, uh, this is my, my thoughts on that. Yeah. But it's to you, yes. <laughs> Any inputs, please? Someone can step up. You mentioned your other vision that uh, about creating an organization that we tried a few years ago. Yeah. She got frozen or, <laughs> well, anyway. Um, yeah, I think um, it is going to happen, an explosion of, um, it is happening, but it is more and more, it's going to happen. And it's through the, in, the internet is going to be, uh, play a big part of it because that's how we communicate nowadays. <laughs> so I think it's going to, uh, more and more is happening and more and more um, the changes that are happening um, in, that is going to be um, explosion, let's say. But uh, later on, we're going to say, whoa! <laughs> and more and more people are opening their consciousness. Uh, but I think the internet is going to play a... Yes, yes, more a principal, a main role on that. Okay. Get all, uh, the idea yeah. that of having the world involved. You know, the ashram that I go to in India is that people come from all over the world. And there's a certain energy that's created. It makes the planet so small because people are coming from everywhere for the same purpose, just like in the summit. And it creates a power in itself that starts to spread. So I like that concept of having the whole planet involved in this and us interacting, you know, with people from all over the world to see that there's not there's nothing cultural about yoga. It's universal. It's within all of us and it can be applied to all of us. Yeah, anytime Swami Vedabharati ji uh, used to talk about this uh, uh, union of yoga alliances, conglomeration of yoga alliances, anytime he used to speak through Sw Swami I, Rama speaking through him or Swami Vedabharati ji speaking? Both. And um, they both were worldwide travelers. They, they drew people from every continent in the world. And 
you know, they saw the potential everywhere and brought people together. It was very exciting to be part of that. And to just meet people from such different cultures, different languages, different religions, but we had this common ground through yoga and spirituality, which transcended all of those other things. Okay. Okay, yeah. So uh, anything to say, anyone, as for your final message of the panel discussion? Once you have something in your mind? Uh, uh, well, I just want to point out that Prakashi was saying something and he got frozen, if he would like to finish his point. Yeah, please. Well, I feel like a lot of the people have started or tried in many different ways to create a container of sorts. Uh, so I feel like it would be nice for somebody that has enough momentum to continue with it because a lot of the time people create the container and then get stuck for various reasons, sometimes beyond their control, could be health, could be family, could be finances, could be technology, could be all these resources. So I think uh, if anybody has tried, I know a lot of us have tried, so, and you've come a long way creating a big container already. So I think a lot of the people would be interested in supporting and sustaining, creating a structure like that. I think uh, uh, we will have a, a detailed global conference, an exclusive yoga. Of course, there are so many conferences going on in the name of yoga, but uh, an exclusive global event from the aspects of inner awakening, uh, I think should be planned. Uh, you know, many people, you know, as you know, Yama, Yama, uh, or, the, or whatever, Ten Commandments or do's and don'ts mm -hmm. of the yoga. Uh, many people have many descriptions for all these things. Uh, each each part of the Patanjali's yoga itself is a big subject, big treatise. Himsa, uh, Satya, Masti, every, everything has got its own. Uh, each one can be turned into a transformed into a book, big book. So it is not by way of reading books or by way of holding hands and legs one can get awakened. It's something more beyond. So based upon this, I think a, a global conference can be initiated by the World United. In 2022, we'll definitely plan in a big, very big way, uh, a physical event, not a virtual event. Uh, in 2021, uh, uh, the World United is planning country-wise transformation festivals, like we have done continent-wise this time. Uh, huge numbers of uh, huge numbers of you know wonderful beings have come forward to share their wisdom. If it is only one event for entire globe, uh, we cannot we cannot accommodate a lot of people. Now we have because we divide to six continents, uh, nearly thousand people, uh, thousand speakers have already present presented their wisdom. Uh, Asia and Africa get to start, but uh, four tomorrow the fourth uh, last day of the North America chapter is going to be closed. So we'll definitely create a, a massive uh, physical event of yoga. Let us do something together. Like, you know, it, the coordinated is not governed by individual. It is not governed by an organized philosophy because spirituality, if you try to organize, it cannot be real spirituality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so if you try to teach spirituality, it will always <laughs> become a structured way. So you can't teach spirituality. It, it is inner affair. So we can even talk on spirituality, maybe instruct some things few things, but uh, never teach. Uh, real teaching cannot happen. So whatever it may be, based upon all these principles, we can really create an impact, provided we all join hands. That is the main motto. Because in a single lifetime, uh, another, you know, if a person lives for even 100 years, the lifespan is only 36,500 days. Uh, lifespan is very short for each one of us. So we're all in the queue to transfer to higher realms. <laughs> we don't know that we are waiting. We are, we are in a queue. So when our card will cut, nobody knows. So before we leave, before in the present life, if we, call, if we all can join unconditionally from the sense of real union, uh, I think we can really make miracles. We can really, we can really create miracles. This is, at a personal level, I have a strong conviction for this. Uh, so I invite all of you to join uh, the World United Council membership is there. Mansi, please provide on the chat box the link and all. 
so anybody who is interested kindly uh, join so thank you very much once again so to wrap up uh, i request manji ji to summarize thank you uh, thank you sir yes. can i help can i help uh, you to share the link it's uh, www.theworldunited.org slash council member Council. Can you put it in the chat, Ansa? Ansa? Yes. Ansa. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just did. Um, so I want to I want to uh, end on this high note. I would like to thank every speaker that was here: Prakash, Prakash ji, uh, Nandi ji, Carol ji, Frida ji, also Dr. Yulia ji. Uh, every session has its own shakti, its own. uh energy and its own consciousness and to be here i just could feel the presence of ascended masters really um i could i could feel the the love and compassion that y'all have for beings not just humans for beings and nature at all levels of consciousness i could feel like the borders Uh, which which separate you know everywhere you know there is a level of snobbery this one is higher this one is lower this one is like this this is different and i could feel that all these paradoxes all these contradictions you know uh, kind of merging uh, through words but i know that these words will ripple out and they will create a change uh, in the world you know the word will go to the world so i really bow down to you i feel so blessed that Dr. Yugandar gives me this opportunity that I get mentored by enlightened beings every day. Um, I the deeply bound bind down to you all. I would like to end this session. Thank you for moderating so beautifully. <laughs> yes, thank you, Kanji. Thank, thank you, Divine Mansri Ji and uh, Dr. Yugandar Yugandar Ji. So beautiful. thank you for bringing us together and um, you know it is time it is the it is the asha the age of consciousness through our presence gratitude thank you everybody it was so lovely to share listen and hear all the beautiful perspective and feel such a united <coughs> vision coming from so many different uh, paths and places so thank you Uh, I also want to thank uh, Deb Deb G for being uh, today. She has been observing, but she is like a mentor and a elder to me. And thank you, Deb, because your presence uh, also contributes to whatever is being created and said in the panel. Uh, deep thank pranam you. to you. Thank you to you. <laughs>